Hello everybody, what we're doing today is going to be testing wing location and what it does for your car. So we went through and tested three configurations, which was a high, medium, and, and rear. Um, and then also the feedback we got from Facebook said we have to test them all together. So we're going to save that for last, but we did test every single one of these combinations on the car at once and it did have some interesting results. So follow along for that. Uh, so basically what we did is we put this image uh, up on our Facebook account and said, all right, let us know what you guys think is the most effective place to put the wing. And the results were very weird. Uh, they're almost all over the place. And I can tell you, I think only two people of the, of the hundreds of comments we got were saying that the, our normal kit was right. But uh, I will tell you this, there's a lot of tribal knowledge on the internet and running around and I hope this video helps you guys out and kind of explains a lot of that to you. Um, so without without further ado, let's jump into it. Oh, I should state that my name is Johnny Chikowski. I own a company called Nine Lives Racing. We're an aerodynamics company where we build wings for racing cars. And so if you're out there looking for a racing car wing um, and you like these tests and you like what we do, give our website a look. Um, I'm not the foremost expert in all aerodynamics. There's there's Adrian Newey's out there, but I do know quite a bit. I've been around for a while, so I'm happy to spread some knowledge and, and help everybody learn as best I can. So let's jump right into it. So the first test we're, we were doing uh, was our Run 8 test, which is essentially our our exact kit. So so this kit here is, uh, this, let me help you out here. So this kit here is our normal E36, what we call our medium downforce kit. So this is a aluminum wing, nine and a half inch cord, uh, set at five degrees AOA with our splitter. And we did design and make changes to this kit via using this program. Um, you know, we've now beveled all the leading edges of those splitters because they increase the airflow, things like that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be comparing the this run to all the other ones out there. Um, so that's, uh, that's our first one. Our first essential test will be what we call our what we're going to call our high wing so let me pull that up for you guys um that is our run. this is what we got going on this is our high wing test um it's ridiculous it's just a a monsterly tall super super high wing um it sticks way above the car you know we're sitting here looking probably mm, say about three feet above the roof of the car and is compared to like our normal medium downforce kit like you see here um we're gonna run these two together so uh i'm gonna jump right into the results which is this button here all right so this is the test here so this is the curved oh curved splitter here which i'm going to select and then our high wing test and so kind of get your get your guesses in for what you think it's going to do um, and so we'll jump right in. So testing our drag, which is this column right here, we did pick up 11 pounds of drag. And I think the drag pickup is mostly due to the pylons themselves. You know, we have these really tall wing pylons that are just sticking up in the air. And anytime you put something there, you're going to make some drag, like just the way it goes. Uh, that's why flying V wing airplanes are way more efficient than one with like a tail. Um, they're just harder to control. And so this one made 11 pounds of drag more. Uh, we did pick up uh, 45 pounds of downforce, which is, is good. You know, not, not a bad uh, start to the day. And, uh, you know, 45 pounds is, is, is good. You know, it's a good gain on it. Uh, 11 pounds of drag to get it isn't so great. I mean, it's fine. But I think if you just lowered the wing a little bit more, you could keep this number. Because full disclosure, we did do this test before on uh on miatas and on the miatas the in in corvettes but on the miatas and the corvettes the roof is sloped and slanted and allows the air to kind of effect you know effect, effectively pass over the cab now on the e36 that we're testing let me pull up the so on the e36 it's much more square it's much more boxy of a car um and i think the my professional guess on the um results of that was coming from the fact that it was a um we're getting wings uh we're getting the wing away from the roof and i think that's what gave us our our biggest um our biggest gains so let me do this let me add in the high wing here and 
what I want to show you to first is the x-ray plot. So this is looking through the car. It's almost like an x-ray um, would be. Let me move this over here a little more. And you can see here, it's a, uh, we're kind of looking here at the, at the high wing wing. And then this will be the base. And what I want you to look at is this area right here, this little spot, you know, just on the tail edge of the wing. And boop, and you can see the wing got just, it's just getting cleaner air. So uh, getting the, I think that's the only difference between the two was that that wing got some just, just cleaner air. And, uh, and that's what got our efficiency up, which is that it's cleaner. Now you're one, probably wondering why isn't our wing higher uh, for that, you know, kind of a kit. And I can show you this right here. Uh, the wing being at this location is set at roof height, which is a rule for a lot of organizations. They do not want the wing to be higher than the roof. And it's, uh, so we set it at that height and to be told, you know, for most 99% of the cars, it's, it's perfect. Uh, I know on the Miatas when we did it, we didn't gain any efficiency by raising it higher than the roof line. Um, but here's kind of like the drawback is of having this wing this tall. Even if this wing weighs one pound, like a single pound, like ours weighs about, um, they're about nine pounds, you know, imported carbon wings are about 10, 11 pounds. So if you have, you know, that much weight that high, it's going to raise your CG, uh, your center of gravity and your center of gravity. What it does is it affects the, how much load is going to your outside tires. Uh, you know, for lack of better terms, for a real quick explanation is how much load goes to your outside tires. So if your CG is real low, your load is more distributed amongst all four tires. And if your load's real high, it gets distributed to the outside tires. And I think uh, the, the benefit of the 50 pounds of downforce over the CG being this high is not going to yield faster lap times. I feel like the CG height of this will hurt it more than the 50 pounds of downforce will give you. Um, so that's kind of why ours aren't that high. Now, if you wanted to get it a couple inches higher, just on like this particular example, like on an E36, give us a call and say you're not running in the class that has those rules. We can modify it for you and get it up a little bit higher. Um, but be very wary. You don't want to get your CG too tall. And 50 pound, chasing 50 pounds is it's going to be easier to just put a gurney flap in it. You know, you'll get 50, you'll 50 pounds just from doing that. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, now let's jump over to the um, R15, the rear wing test, right? Now, I'm, this is a going to be a learning moment because the majority of our Facebook posts were saying that the furthest back was going to be the most efficient, right? And I just want to show you here. Um, yeah, it, it did pick up some efficiency. It's another 50 pound gain. And I think that's from it being uh, further away from that roof and more so than its actual location with it kind of with the air being able to leave underneath the car easier or anything like that. I think it was more to do with the it getting further away from the, the roof. It did lose a pound of drag, which is sitting right here. Um, that one's one pound less drag, 55 pounds. But I'm going to show you guys the smoking bullet on this one and why. And this, this is literally the reason why we move wings around. Uh, this, this is the main benefit you get from transitioning a wing from rear to forward to back to, you know, that kind of thing. We change the center of pressure 30%, which is insane. It's an insane amount to move at 30%. And all that was was just from shuffling the wing around, right? It's making essentially the same downforce a little bit more from getting away from that roof and, but it really shifted the center of pressure. And that's why you'll see our wings that our wings are never in the same spot and why our pylons are always different is because we're always shuffling that wing forward and rear, trying to get that center of pressure, right? Because what happens is if you have, um, your center of pressure is that let's say your car's at 50, 50 weight balance and your center of pressure is like this at 31%. rear. actually, let me, that's the change. Let me go over here and show you what it was. So it moved to 32% right here. If you're, if you have 50, 50 weight distribution, right? That means at slow speeds, your tires are getting pushed down evenly into the track. And then you change that and you now have an arrow balance at 32%. Cause remember arrow is just weight. It's just weight without mass. So 
and now all of a sudden you have 30, uh, a higher percentage of balance in the rear, that means as you go faster, your handling is going to flip on you. You're going to go from a very nice, nice neutral handling car or even like a slight understeer car to having a major understeer car on this. Like that car with 32% re, uh, front bias is not going to turn. It will, it will be fighting you the entire time. And what we really want to do, if we match it though, if we have our arrow, if we have a 50% arrow load, like on our kit here, we want to be within 10%. So this is our, our medium downforce kit it has 60% on the front. So actually the front makes a little bit more front uh, downforce. You want to be within 10% of your weight because when you start going faster, the car is going to handle exactly the same. You're not going to have a handling flip which is going to be hard for someone to control, hard for a new person to control. Uh, this is going to be easy for someone to control, and I've never made a car faster by making it harder to drive. So yeah, so that this is why you move wings around. It's not for efficiency. It's not for picking up mega downforce or making a wing do what it isn't designed to do. It's for setting your center of balance. So you can just move that wing around, and then you can get that center of balance positioned really nicely, like we've done here. So that's that's why we have our medium downforce kit built the way we do. Like it's kind of far forward for that reason. So yeah, so there was a there was a gain. There, uh, it's not ter it's not huge, um, but yeah. So that's why we've gone away from that, and that's why those those wings are in those locations. Um, I sh I do need to stop you before we go into running the big dog of running all three wings at once. Um, we we pay for all these tests, so uh, we. Total Sim is um, our supplier. These are the guys that give us the this this software so we can run the CFD program. And we pay for all these runs. So if you guys could really give us a like, subscribe, share, you know, drop a comment, anything, interact with it in any way would help us a ton. Um, and of course, when this is all done, all this data is going to be hosted on NineLivesRacing.com in our blog posts, and you'll be able to download this for fifty cents. So you'll be able to get. All these runs, all the images, all the all the data is available for fifty cents on the blog post. So yeah, just check that out. Uh, that's that's kind of uh, our jam. So um, but let's jump into the the big dot. Let's do the big wing. I'm gonna call it the biplane. So running all the three wings at once. This is what Facebook. This is probably the most uh, Facebooky thing that we could possibly do, where. It gained. This is an this is an improvement over a single wing. It gained 554 pounds of downforce, which you know kind of makes sense. Each wing makes about you know uh, three some 300 down, pounds of downforce ish, and there's two more of them, so there's closer to 600. And then with that wing in the back not getting totally clean air, you know we lost about 50 pounds. So yeah, about 500 pounds of downforce. Just adding those wings gained almost more than the splitter and wing combo of the medium downforce kit right up here and i'm going to turn off this this check mark here and that's going to show us our actual numbers made 900 it makes mind you with no wing and splitter it makes 200 pounds of lift and now it makes 929 pounds of downforce well over 1100 pounds of downforce increase over the top one uh over and having no wing at all so it's it's incredible, but we did pick up 150 pounds of drag over that. Um, here's the other amazing thing. I got to push it back over. The, the center of pressure, 0.6 pounds down for 0.6% of the weight is on the front tires. Negative 0.6 pounds of weight are on the front tires. So the front's actually getting lifted just in, in or the rear is pretty essentially stealing all the downforce off the car. And the front splitters just no hope of hell of keeping it keeping it down because all that weight, almost all of that 900, 1200 pounds of downforce is on the rear axle. This car simply will not turn. It will not go around corners. It it's just it, but it is making really good numbers. So it's uh you know something to be learned from there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's our test. Um, you know that's our big. Our big ugly, uh, you know, triple element wings, and uh, yeah, if you guys like these kinds of comments, um, actually at the end, drop comments down below uh, for what kind of test you want to see next. You know, we love just testing silly things and have, making stuff that's fun to, to look at. So if you want to see a fun test, drop it below. Happy to run it for you. You know, give us ideas. But other than that, that's it from us. 
Appreciate you guys. Talk to you soon.